Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential equation. I hope I haven't made this video before I, because I made so many videos. You can go ahead and check them out. I also made playlists. If you are new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. All right, anyways, we have one plus i to the power z. z is a complex number and we get one minus i. Now, how are 1 plus i and 1 minus i are related? Well, they're conjugates. So, if you have a plus pi as z or any complex number, in this case, I'd like not to use a z because z is a little different. But if you have a plus pi, which is the name of this channel, by the way, its complex conjugate is just going to be a plus a minus pi. So, you change the imaginary part. And that's what's happening here. In other words, we have an exponent that conjugates. How nice is that, right? So let's go ahead and find out what z is. What kind of power can turn 1 plus i into 1 minus i? Isn't that an interesting transformation? I think it is. Anyways, so let's go ahead and remember the quick definition of complex exponentiation. If you have two complex numbers z and w, w to the power z is defined as e to the power z ln w. And of course, if you have the other way around, z to the power w is e to the power w ln z. But r the reason I brought this one up first is because my exponent is a z, so I don't really care about the other version. Okay, anyways, now we're going to go ahead and replace w with 1 plus i. That's going to give us an expression for this complex exponential because think about it. I mean, you can pretty much interpret what 2 to the power 3 is. It's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, right? Hopefully you know that. But with complex numbers, how do you write 1 plus i z times? And if we don't even know z is, and it's going to be a complex number probably, right? How do you write a complex number, a complex number of times, and then multiply together? That's going to be too complex for me, right? What do you think? Anyways, let's go ahead and apply the definition. Luckily, we have a definition. So 1 plus i to the power z can be written as e to the power, thanks to Euler, we have something called Euler's number, and it's just amazing. It's Euler amazing. Okay, anyways, I just made it up. So we can write this as e to the power z ln 1 plus i. We have z ln 1 plus i. Okay? Now, Million dollar question, what is ln 1 plus i? Don't worry, we'll talk about it. But now we need to set it equal to 1 minus i. So a couple of things here. First of all, we need to worry about ln 1 plus i, and then we also need to be able to write this using the exponential form, right? But it's not raised to a power, it doesn't matter. We can still use the polar form. But if you just think real simple about this. My goal is to solve for z, so why not just ln both sides? Real quick, let's do it, right? Like this and like that. And this guy is going to move to the front, so it's going to be z ln 1 plus i, and ln e is going to be 1, so it's gone, right? We're going to get this, and then from here, isolate z, you should be getting something like this. Simple, right? Case closed. No, not really. What about the LNs? What are they? And how do you simplify that? Yes, you could probably follow this. And uh, at the end, I'll show you something. So please remember this when I show you that stuff at the end. Okay? Let's see how this plays out. But let's get back to our problem. Here's what I'd like to do. After writing the left-hand side in exponential form, I want to do the same thing here. How can I turn 1 minus i into polar form? Easy. You have to consider two things. You got to write 1 minus i as r e to the i theta. r is the modulus, which is root 2, of course, square root of a squared plus b squared. You probably know that. And theta is going to be 1 minus i. Think about it. 1 minus i is just going to be in the fourth quadrant. So we can kind of think of it as a negative angle or negative pi over 4, right? But wait a minute, that's just the principal value because the principal value needs to be between negative pi and pi. But we're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi. So it could also be 7 pi over 4. It could also be uh, 8 pi plus uh, minus pi over 4, so on and so forth. Infinitely many values. So let's write it in a more general form, which is square root of 2 
times e to the power i. And now I'm going to write my argument as negative pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. So far so good? Yay! Let's clean up this area a little bit because it's too messy. And then we're going to go ahead and simplify this. Okay? Here we go. Now, what are we going to do next? We do need to natural log both sides. But before that, I want to be able to replace ln 1 plus i with something. Maybe I don't. Let's just ln. We're going to get z ln 1 plus i. I'll do it next. Equals, when you ln this, you're going to get ln root 2. And when you plus, of course, the log is going to turn the product into a sum. And you're going to be getting i times negative pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. By the way, that square root of 2, I don't know why it stayed there. It shouldn't be there. Okay, forgot to erase it. Now, let's go ahead and focus on ln1 plus i. But since we already know ln1 minus i, this should be fairly easy. Very similar to this one. It's going to be ln root 2 plus i times pi over 4. This time, the argument is pi over 4 because 1 plus i is in the first quadrant. You can guess, right? Plus 2 pi k. I just wanted to use a different integer because they don't have to be the same. And now, this is equal to that. I'm lazy. I don't want to write it again. Too much work, right? Okay. Now let's go ahead and divide both sides by this. And we're going to get the following. And that's going to be the answer, right? And now we're going to check out a couple things. So this is going to be in the numerator, ln root 2. By the way, I could also write this as 1 half ln 2. Does that bother you? It kind of does bother me. But I'm going to leave it alone because I think this is fine. Big deal. Now we're going to get plus i multiply by negative pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. And then all of that is divided by ln root 2, something super similar, plus i times negative pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. Of course, I forgot to say, but k and n are integers. I mean integers, right? So what is that supposed to mean? It means we can replace n and k with pretty much anything we want, including 0. Yay! That's going to give us hopefully something nicer. And actually it does. If you go ahead and replace n and k both with 0, then you kind of get a simpler version, which I guess we could be considered the principal value. ln root 2. And by the way, I'm just going to write this as minus i pi over 4. It just looks a little better. Divided by ln root 2. Wait a minute, I messed up somewhere because not both of these are oh, okay. The bottom is just going to be plus pi over 4, not minus pi over 4. Here we go. That's the uh, denominator, right? Here we go. I just miscopied it. You get the idea. Okay, cool. Now it's going to be plus i pi over 4. Uh-oh, this looks really interesting, right? A complex number divided by its conjugate. And obviously, you can multiply by the conjugate, which is going to give you the top square divided by a real number, so on and so forth. No big deal. You can leave it at that. But this is the exponent that conjugates. You see how powerful that is? With a minus sign here and a plus sign, it's super duper powerful. Let's go ahead and take a look at something that's the final result. If you wanted to take a screenshot, go ahead and do so now because we're about to move. All right, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. And I think we already did. But now, compare this result. If n is equal to 0, i is going to distribute. Negative i squared is going to be 1. If we can forget about it, and you're going to get something very similar. Unfortunately, log means ln in the Wolfram Alpha world. Unfortunately, I think log should be saved for base 10, in my opinion. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then. Be safe, take care, and bye-bye.